Professors to my spiritual master, Sri Jagat Guru Sudarshan Acharyaji Maharaj. I pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Ramanuj. I pay my obeisances to the Purva Acharyas. I pay my obeisances to the Twelve Vavas. I pay my obeisances to Mother Lakshmi. I pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Ramana. I welcome all of you here physically at the Sri Narayan Dham in Durban, South Africa. I welcome those who are watching this discourse locally, nationally, and internationally. And I welcome in advance those who are going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on YouTube and the various groups from around the world. In our ongoing topic, creation, this is our fourth satsang on Pitra Paksh. I spent a lot of time on the first three discourses explaining in detail and as per scriptural injunctions the necessity to do your Pitra Paksh according to scriptural injunction. And I was amazed today while surfing, if that's the right word, surfing through Facebook, I saw a video in a group called KZN Hindu. And I was amazed and dismayed simultaneously that a so-called international scholar was being interviewed and I shared this post, I'd like you to go on my page. And he stated that he calls himself a scholar. I've seen him on numerous shows in London. And he perceives himself to be an expounder and a knower of Sanatan Dharma. Now Sanatan Dharma takes its roots in the Vedas. The very basis for Sanatan Dharma is the Vedic injunctions. And these injunctions are the four Vedas which include 108 Upanishads, the supplementary text which are the 18 Puranas, the Itiyasas, which are histories, in which God himself comes down to earth and enacts a precedent. The Supreme Lord, together with the 330 Devis and Devtas, and his purest of devotees, come down to earth in the Ramayana and in the Mahabharata. And both times he sets up a precedent on how man should behave and what man should do to emancipate himself in this material universe. The Lord him Yet, this scholar states that it is not necessary to follow the Shastras. He has a great following in the world. He has grasped the English language. How can you expound Sanatana Dharma if you refute the root 
of Sanatana Dharma. You cannot expound Hinduism without the Shastras. For the foundation of the Shastras, of Hinduism is the Shastra Dek Sarva. And this type, these, are, these people are called professional reciters. And they are in abundance in this Kali Yoga. In this Kali Yoga, these professional reciters are in abundance. And they come to South Africa from all corners of the globe. And they have satsang in various places. And you go pay your 200 to 2,000 rand. And these people come and sing in Hindi or in Sanskrit or in Tamil or in Urdu and they come with a harmonium and a few tabla players. I can send Mama and Rakesh to India to do the same, you understand? And they call themselves great teachers of Sanatana Dharma. If a teaching does not come from the Brahma Sutras, if a teaching does not come from the Bhagavad Gita, if it is not found within the parameters of the Ramayana, if it is not found within the parameters of the Mahabharata, if it is not found within the parameters of the Sattvic Puranas, the six Puranas that are in Satagun, and if it does not come from within the parameters of the 108 Upanishads, then it brings displeasure to the Supreme Lord. It brings displeasure to the Supreme Lord. The followers of Vedic injunctions bring pleasure to the Supreme Lord. And those that are against the Vedic injunctions bring displeasure to the Supreme Lord. Both pleasure and displeasure is the reason for the creation of this material universe. Both the Lord's pleasure and displeasure is the reason for the creation of the material universes. He creates a systematic category through perfect synthesis in the Vedas. A perfect category so that man can evolve from darkness to light. And I want to give you a small, very, very small example. There are many fathers seated in this satsang tonight. Many fathers, I'm saying many, many fathers, Father. Why am I saying many, many fathers? Dana? Because many mothers are also fathers. Get it, Jessica? Many mothers are also some of you have two fathers, one biological and one commanding. You all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Tana, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, Tana is loud and clear. All right? One biological and one commanding. That's why I'm saying there's many fathers in my satsang. More fathers than? Mothers. When a father is dis 
please. When a father is displeased, he enumerates regulative principles. Are they not? When a father is displeased with a particular child, then the father lists regulative principles. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Do that, do that, do that. When you transgress your father's instructions, you bring displeasure to your father, don't you? Yes or no? And when you follow your father's instructions, you bring pleasure to your father, don't you? Your father is your creator, isn't he? And he created you for his pleasure or displeasure? Pleasure. But in your activities, when you bring displeasure to him, he sets out regulative principles. Does he not? And what is your duty to bring pleasure to your father? What is your duty? Follow the regulative principles. If you follow the house law of your father, then it's a happy house. And if you do not follow the house law, then it's an unhappy house. When you follow your instructions of your father, you are in liberation, aren't you? And when you don't follow the instructions of your father, you are in bondage, aren't you? Because displeasure brings bondage, and pleasure brings liberation. Are you understanding? And that's how simple it is. Majority in this classroom called Lord Narayan's classroom, this material universe has brought displeasure to the Supreme Lord. And that is the reason, that is the reason for the creation of the material universe. So that you enter the material universe, you find a competent guru a bona fide spiritual master who comes from a bona fide lineage, who has realized the Vedic injunctions himself, and through his own realization, he can bring you to self realization and ultimately to God. -realization. And all this knowledge is encompassed in the Vedic injunctions. So if this scholar is telling you, and it was specifically on Pitar Paksh, whether you must follow your three, whether you must honor your three generations, and he said it doesn't matter whether you honor your three generations or whether you honor your seven generations. And luckily, in the, my three preceding discourses, I comprehensively dealt with the reason why three. Why you must honor your three current generations. Your parents, your grandparents, and your great-grandparents on your paternal side, but it also applies to your maternal side. Did I state that or not? Yes. And I stated that this is Devi Lok, 
above Devi Lok is Pitra Lok, and above Pitra Lok is Indra Lok. Indra Lok is heaven, heavenly planet, right up to Brahma Lok, are uh, heavenly uh, dimensions. Above the earthly dimension is the dimension for Pitra or Chandra Lok or Chandra Lok. And I said at any given time, this dimension takes three generations of your ancestors live simultaneously in Pitra Lok and the fourth generation is released to the heavenly planets provided you do your Pitra Puja as per scriptural injunctions. Did I say that? Now here comes a scholar Can you have a scholar in science? Can you have a scholar in biology? Can you have a scholar in chemistry? Or must you have a biologist and a chemist? Who is the ultimate authority in chemistry. Who is the ultimate authority in physics? Can you get a scholar on physics or do you get a physicist who is the ultimate authority? Then how do we get scholars in Sanatana Dharma because Sanatana Dharma is the absolute science? How do we get scholars on absolute science? Sanatana Dharma is a spiritual subject. Sanatana Dharma is a spiritual subject. So who will be most versed in spiritual science? A spiritual master or a scholar? So do scholars have any, any say when it comes to Sanatana Dharma? Can they have any say? What makes scholars proficient in Sanatana Dharma? Because Sanatana Dharma, the laws, the rules, the regulative principles is given by Lord Sriman Narayan himself. And he states, in order for you to attain spiritual knowledge, you must become a disciple of a bona fide Vaishnavite guru. And once you become a disciple, there is no need to be a scholar. Vedas are not research. What do scholars do? What do scholars do? They research and they summarize their research. Vedas cannot be researched. Vedas can only be revealed. The conclusions of the Vedas cannot be researched. The conclusion of the Vedas can only be revealed. And it can only be revealed to a befitting disciple who has fulfilled all the criteria for its re revelation. The Vedas can only be revealed to a befitting disciple who have fulfilled all the requirements for this revelation. When God is pleased with him, 
when his guru is pleased with him, he becomes a reservoir of knowledge. He becomes a reservoir of knowledge. Who knows me the longest day? Oh, Jessica. Jessica, I mean, how long you know me? Eleven years. How long you in my satsang? May. One year and four months, five months. You think it is possible for me to have learned in any school what I discuss here from the time you know me? Because you and I were working together right up to 2013. Until we disengaged, I disengaged myself from your organization. 2013. In the seven years, you think I went into some mountains in the Himalayas and stood on one leg until this knowledge was revealed to me? No, you are living proof, isn't it? Yes, that I'm saying the Vedas cannot be researched. It has to be revealed. For if I attain my knowledge to research, is it possible from all the discourses that you have heard just in your one year and four months for me to flow for me to spew out the Vedas, as I do in my discourses. It's not possible to do so. So it means the Vedas will be revealed to the suitable candidate. And I'm teaching all of you how to become the suitable candidate. Because the tastiest meal you can ever eat as a spirit soul is pure knowledge. The tastiest food you can ever eat as a spirit soul is pure knowledge. And this topic is relevant in this Pitra Pass. Because when we give food, with this food, we have to give you knowledge. Because the ancestors that are present here, they came for more knowledge than the food itself. For in Pitra Lok, there's no satsang. Pitra Lok, no satsang. Satsang is only in Devi Lok. And we are in Kalyuk, the darkest period. The darkest period of the four seasons. The four seasons are Satyuk, Tretayuk, Dwaparayuk, and Kalyuk. Now, I want you to use your intelligence. I want you to use your intelligence because you have been given a human body to use your intelligence. Any other body, you do not use intelligence, you use your instinct. And I'll give you an example today. Mataji, for a while, wanted Ram, our dog, to have a bath. And she finally cornered him this morning. And he had the most beautiful bath. The most beautiful bath. Then he went down to the stream. And he came back full of mud. <laughs> In that half an hour, after a clean, absolutely beautiful bath, he went down in the stream and came full of mud and showed my life. Because he has no intelligence. His instinct with the water he had instinctively took him to water down. No intelligence. But this group that is seated in my satsang today, you got intelligence. And I want you to use your intelligence because 
That is what makes you unique from the 8 million other species. Only your intelligence makes you unique from the 8 million other species. In Satyog, you have to meditate. The lifespan is 100,000 years and you have to meditate for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. In Treta Yoga, the lifespan is 10,000 years and you have to perform gorgeous ceremonies and rituals for thousands of years. In Dwapara Yoga, lifespan is 1,000 years. Lifespan is 1,000 years. And you have to do deity worship for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. In Kali Yoga, lifespan is only 100 years. And the only thing you have to do in Kali Yoga, which is equivalent in merits of Dwapara Yoga, Treta Yoga, and Sat Yoga is come to Sun Kirtana Yajna. What is Sun Kirtana Yajna? Come to a satsang, listen to the glorification of the Lord through songs and discourse. And the results and the merit is the same. So I want to see how many Rams here. Our dog Ram, not Lord Ram. <laughs> Our dog Ram. Come to satsang, listen to discourses, and go back in the stream. And my own analysis through my own specimens who were earlier aspirants. All are in the stream. All are in the stream. Do you understand? So I'm yet to find an intelligent aspirant. Because look how easy it is. What can be more easier, Rakesh Bhai, than jumping in your car bring in your mama, your best friend, then dad and mom. There's no one closer than mama to you. Then dad and mom to satsang. Listen to the guru for 45 minutes. Listen to the bhajans and get involved in the bhajan for 25 minutes. And you get the same merits as thousands thousands and thousands and thousands of years of meditation. Those gurus that are teaching you meditation, they are not gurus. Those gurus that are teaching you ritualistic ways of receiving emancipation, they are not gurus. Those gurus who are telling you deity worship, they are not gurus. Gurus that are conducting Sankirtana Yajna, they are the real Gurus. They are the real Gurus. Because that is a verdict injunction. In Kali Yuga, the only thing you have to do is go to a satsang, listen to the glorification of the name of the Lord through music and how simple? How? But Rakesh, what you'd like to do? Run to the stream. Immediately after this, I'll find you in the back there, in the stream, wood ram. <laughs> so you'll all, instead of following Guru and Lord Narayan, you're following our dog. Are there any questions? So we must be militant in our teaching. We must catch these 
scholars and we must expose them like what I have done in this sattva. You think it is a right thing that I did or you think it is a wrong thing? The gurus are the defenders of Sanatan Dharma. And the scholars are the offenders of Sanatan Dharma. And it is the duty of the defenders to become militant and expose and expose the falsity of the scholars claiming to be Hindus. If anyone tells you do not follow Sastra, then in chapter 16 of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Sri Krishna describes that person as a demon. Lord Sri Krishna describes anyone who do not follow scriptural injunctions as a demon. And Lord Sri Krishna goes further to say that those people who belittle me, who do not listen to my instructions of the Bhagavad Gita and who considers me to be an ordinary man, that person I repeatedly send into the womb of the most demonic mothers. Who says that? And who is Lord Sri Krishna? The Lord Himself. And this is why I have taken a hard line. And I will continue in this manner in which I expound Sanatana Dharma. For it is not very simple for me to expound Sanatana Dharma when these offenders, especially in this world of technology and social media, they are mugging the efforts that the Sri Sampradaya is permeating throughout this universe. All of you understand? So when you find me timelessly disintegrating those that are against Sanatan Dharma, especially those of you that are new, don't get frightened and run away and see this is a fighting guru. This is a fighting guru. Because Vishwada Ramanuj Das, he asked me a question today. He said, he doesn't know whether I'm putting him to a test when I talk about fighting. He doesn't know whether I'm putting him to a test. No test. No test. If the protector and expounder of Sanatan Dharma does not retaliate when Sanatan Dharma is attacked, is coming on social media and telling the followers of Sanatan Dharma, you don't have to follow Shastra. It was made for another time and another age. Is this not a direct attack on Sanatan Dharma? There are millions of us around the world right now, Hindus, who do not know the significance of Pitrupaksh. And if a man tells you, don't worry about the Shastras, follow what your family was following, don't worry whether it is three generations. Don't you think he is bringing the demons into play? 
Isn't he bringing the demons into play? Isn't he messing with our modern minds? Isn't he messing with our modern minds? So don't you think a guru must get up and scare the living lights out of this man? Mama? Yes. yes. And I don't have to rock him with my fist, Mama. I have the whole Vedas that I can attack him with. I have the whole Vedas because you can't be a Hindu and simultaneously reject the Sastras. All of you understand? And I am happy to come across this type of offenses. So I can teach you practically while you in my discourse. Does why it make sense? Yes. I, whilst you are in my discourse, I can practically teach you. And then we can understand why Sanatan Dharma, those born in Sanatan Dharma, are in a state of chaos. In a state of chaos because Everyone has a license to expound Sanatana Dharma. Everyone has a license to expound Sanatana Dharma. Namaste said Mama and Rakesh Bhai. Orange outfits. I'll send them to India. Make them long beards. Mama, you just play the nal, don't say anything. Rakesh Bhai will sing and dance with you. And then that gives you the license to be a Noah of Sanatana Dharma. All of you understand? Everyone? So I have a different topic prepared for you.